You're listening to the Canton 40 with Alex and Amy, and we're joined by Sophie Ellis Baxter. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. So, 22 years since Murder on the Dance Floor was originally released, and now it's back in the Kent Top 40 and charts around the world. How how does it feel? <laughs> um, well, I've used the word bonkers a lot recently. There's definitely <laughs> an element of that. It's sort of it's like magical. It's fun. I think it's pretty unique. I mean, mm. what a ride! You know, Murder has been a friend of mine for such a long time, <laughs> and. Uh, and now to have it back, but also having a slight reinvention thanks to Saltburn is really fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it's an iconic scene when it appears in Saltburn as well. When did you mm. first know that it was going to be in the film? Um, quite a while ago, I was asked for approval, but you only get a very small amount of information then. Yeah. So I knew I knew some key elements, like the lack of clothes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like, are you okay with your song mm. being associated with full frontal nudity? Yes, a little bit of that, yeah. But I, I could also see that it was in a film that was written directed by Emerald Fennell, so I was like, oh, it's in safe hands. Cool. Because I'd seen Promising Young Woman, so I was like, I think I think I can trust her. Yeah. And I'm so glad I had that instinct, because I thought the movie's brilliant, and I love how she's used music throughout, actually. So, yeah, what a nice thing to be part of. <laughs> Did you get to watch the the scene in isolation or the film before it came out, or was your first experience of it in a cinema? I got to see it um, before it came out, but not that long before it came out, and it was the whole film. So we went to, to a screening. Amazing. And I took along my family. So I was with my mum and my eldest boy and my husband and my brother. We all trotted along to watch it, but we all loved it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's obviously quite challenging in parts, but we did all love it. Yeah, it must have been a, an interesting, you know, because a lot of people watched Saltburn over Christmas with their family. <laughs> and there was this yeah. huge, like, Twitter shared moment of people going, probably shouldn't have put this on with my gran in the room. Was there a bit a bit like that with your mum and your and your son there with you? I wasn't too worried about my mum. I was, I did feel a bit for my son, but actually, you know what, he was fine. I think it was mainly me because I was sort of projecting... <laughs> worry onto him so I do remember having my head in my hands a couple of times and thinking oh dear <laughs> but um but he loved it so we, we did kind of get out the other side and actually I don't think I did need to worry he was quite he was quite unfazed actually he's 19 and he he held it together well he seemed all right yeah he's he's, <laughs> he's a fully fledged adult now yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly good stuff I mean it's, it's an iconic moment when it comes up in in the film and it's a song as well that still feels so timeless I think it came out when I was three years old but it's one that I've got so many memories of throughout my life and it's one of those things that when you release something as an artist you kind of let go of it and, and put it out into the world and people in Definitely. to an extent just do what they want with it have you had any surprises yeah. through your life of, of where it has come up and where it's been used yeah, I think that's very well put about letting it go. And you're right. You do, you sort of give it over to a sort of communal space, really. And then actually part of your relationship with the song evolves because of how people reflect it back to you. So mm. every time someone's told me it's, you know, the song that was their song from uni or from yeah. a holiday they went on or a dance at their wedding or whatever it might be, that all becomes part of its story. And I really love that feeling, actually. So it's just quite remarkable that it's still showing me new things after all this time. I think that's the bit that's really crazy. And obviously you've had the film, but also new people hearing the song and, you know, people doing dance to it and all the stuff I've seen on TikTok. Yeah, and you're just yeah. like, it kind of blows your mind a little bit, really. You're like, wow, this song is, has, has reached so many people. Um, it's extraordinary. Yeah, what, what an amazing thing. Speaking of the um, the like TikTok <laughs> virality of of the song, um, <laughs> has there been someone that you've seen dancing around to this song on TikTok that has just like blown your mind about how far this song has gone? Actually, I think my favourite example of that was recently. I saw that Gwen Stefani used this song to show her oh, garden. Oh, amazing! <laughs> because I'm used to people dancing to it, but I don't think it's been used very much for uh, for gardening. So that was quite nice. <laughs> well, it's going to have whole new legs now. <laughs> People will be like, look at look at my rhododendron bush. It's so fabulous. That's literally the sort of thing she was doing. <laughs> that is incredible. And um, yeah, I like that. And there are there are so many iconic naughty songs in in the film as well, like uh, "Perfect" mm. by Mason versus Princess Superstar. Yes. And, and it's one of those things that we've seen over the past while that 
in recent years because of, of TikTok, lots of songs have made amazing comebacks through films as well and, and charted again for yeah. the first time. Have you got any other songs from the noughties that you'd love to see make a comeback? Oh, well, I think I think a lot of it is happening. You know, seeing Girls yeah. Aloud going on to the Sugar Babes. Um, there's so much stuff like that. Uh, you know, people have got like, you know, renewed appreciation for the quality of the songs and how good they are. And like the people should be like, these are just a bop. They're brilliant. Um, and I suppose, I suppose it's what's happened. Uh, like for me, when I was growing up, we got the benefit of that kind of like the way that time gets sifted. So you don't have like all the songs. You just kind of got like mm. what's, what's kind of remained, you know, like cherry picked. So, you know, when I grew up in the sort of eighties and nineties, I was hearing songs from like the sixties and seventies where you don't get the whole decade, you just get bits and bobs where like, this is a good song, this is a good song. So I guess that's what's happening for for the noughties now, which is quite crazy to think of like as a mirror. But um, yeah, there's loads of good tunes. Uh, I think there's definitely more to plunder. I heard um, the Freemasons remix of Uninvited, the Alanis, Mor- Alanis Morissette song that yeah. they've done with Bailey Zook. I hadn't heard that for ages. It came out in like 2007. It sounded amazing. It sounded so good. So it's a lovely feeling, actually, because you go like, oh, and you get all the, all the feels all over again. Yeah, 100%. Are there, are there any Naughties trends as well that you, you want to see make a comeback fashion-wise or anything like that too? Oh, I don't know, because I don't know if I've ever been very good at like knowing what that's about anyway. I mean, a lot of the stuff I wore then is the same stuff I'm into <laughs> now. <laughs> so when I came, so I, I started my solo career at the beginning of the Naughties and and I, I wasn't really very good at fashion, but I knew that I liked like a 60s silhouette and that kind of thing. And I'm mm. actually still, I'm still kind of into that. So I think, I think I'm probably the wrong person to ask, really. I don't know if trends has ever really been my thing. <laughs> to be fair, I think there's a lot of stuff from the noughties that should probably just stay there. Step, like, hey. Footless tights <laughs> do not need to come back. <laughs> oh my goodness, footless tights. I completely forgot about that. What about a shrug? Was a shrug then or was that 90s? Shrugs were a funny little thing as well. Yeah. Do you remember them? They're just, just sleeves of a top. Yes, yes, oh. yes, like a bolero yeah. jacket. Yeah, yes. yeah. But, but smaller, if that's possible. And then yes. like a long... Like like but footless tights, you're right. Go yeah, on, long vest top, little waist belt, ballet pumps. Yeah. Just, yep. it was yep. it was a time. Um, <laughs> obviously the song is, you know, soundtracks, the, the climax of the film is such an iconic moment of... Saltburn. Have you ever done a similar kind of victory dance around your house? And and what was the occasion and what was the song? Well, um, I, I'm not really a kind of naked dancer, if that's the uh, subtext to the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, clothing, clothing could have been just, just the yeah. joy. <laughs> the joy. Oh, the joy. Oh, my word. So many songs. I mean, Recently, uh, my husband Rich and I have got back into Born Slippy. That's been one we've been playing a bit recently. Amazing. That still sounds amazing. Um, there's a song by Thelma Houston from the 70s, her version of Don't Leave Me This Way, that is forever glorious to me. Um, yeah, there's like loads of songs, I think, that can give you that that like euphoria, that kind of freedom and that hedonism. It's really important, actually, to have that space, I think, because it kind of it's like a bit of a reset especially if you've been feeling stressed or there's a lot going on, it just lets you kind of like shimmy all the tension away, which is a good thing, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like sometimes we should just almost, like for medical reasons, yes, give ourselves yeah. Yeah, five minute dance party every day and just oh, shake imagine? it out. You'd feel great. You'd be like, oh, I've got a spring back in my step. Yes, <laughs> I think you're right. And then anything else that happens, you drive into work and you're like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Have Had a dance my dance party. party. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Because that's the magic of music. It can actually flip the script like that. I think it's incredible. Like, I love that it can be such a tonic in that way. Well, talk, talking of music and new music particularly, we've also heard that you're working on a new album. Are there any, any kind of things you can tell us about that? Any teasers, any news? Well, quite sort of uh, happily... And with a bit of serendipity, I think I'd already decided I was going to make another dance disco pop album because I spent the last decade working with a singer songwriter called Ed Harcourt. And we, we did three albums together and we decided we're only ever going to do three. So we finished the, the third one came out last year. It was a song, an album called Hannah. And um, so now that I'm, you know, not, not writing in such a like, Oh, lovely way with Ed. I was like, right, I'm going to go back to the other thing that always made me happy 
which is writing with a lot of um, pop writers that I used to write with back in the day. So I was already back in the studio with a lot of familiar faces from that era. So it's quite it's quite funny, the parallels, actually. So, yeah, it's quite nice. Uh, it's given a nice momentum to what I'm up to. That's really, really great to hear. Can't wait to hear it. Thank you. Yeah, a very... it's exciting. It's such a nice way to start the year as well. Yeah, yeah. And and I I feel like a lot of people have come straight out of the gates in 2024 with mm. hitting us with the music, which makes me feel very excited for this year. So it's yeah. good to know a little it's bit of invigorating. some Sophie Alex Baxter on the way as well. Thank you so Definitely. much for talking to us and um, yes, sharing the you. joy of Murder <laughs> on the Dance Floor again. Um we're going to play your song now in the chart. Can you introduce it for us? Oh, well, yeah. Thank you so much for talking to me. And uh, here is my old friend, but maybe new to you. I don't know. <laughs> Murder on the dance floor. <laughs> the chart show for Kent. The Kent Top 40. KM FM.